So we're going to get started on 372. So this is for the Soft S Clone Wars. 372 is going to run 20 inch, 3 8 round chain. That's the rules. That's what we got to run. Has to have a can type muffler. We'll probably just put a nice big hole in the front. We'll do a little bit of testing if we have time. See if a 7 or 8 pin is going to work out. I'm really thinking this piston right here is going to help us get what we need. Now this is a firewood type build. It's going to be extra hot. Not something that will probably hold up long term. But what we're hoping to do, stay within the rules, make it as strong and fast as we can. We have to keep the brake flag and these saws will be running on the ground. So we still need it to idle. We need it to spool up quick and get to the wood. I think they're going to run an 8x8 eight eight or a 9x9 nine nine camp square log to race these in. Well, like I said, at the end of the day, this is all just fun. We'll put some time into it, but we're not going to go super overboard on these regular class projects. Or maybe we will. We'll just see. But we'll get this one tore down and go from there. Still not a fan of these full wraps. Definitely not what we need on this one as a racer. See it had a little bit of spring to it. Well let's get this out of the way, set it on our other saw fest builds. Those will be coming up. Our muffler off. Next size up. Five millimeter on the muffler bolts. Go back and take our top cover off. That one. Alright, like I said, this is just going to be round one for right now. If anybody has anything that they absolutely want to see done, let me know and we'll try and maybe fit it in on one of these builds. Let me drain the fuel out of this. We'll come back. Remove the carb, pull the cylinder off. All right, so we'll finish this here tear down. Like I said, I'm not even gonna bother timing this factory cylinder. That's off, that's off. Move that out of the way. What are you calling? Go to unhook our impulse line. There we go. Alright, here we go. Cylinder doesn't look too awful bad, so I think we'll have a good base to start with. Single ring piston. But like I said, I plan on swapping that out anyway. We'll get this clutch pulled off. We'll get the recoil pulled off. There we go. Get all this out of the way. We'll pop this flywheel off real quick. 
All right, got the flywheel out of the way now. Now we can go all the way around without much trouble. All right, what I'm going to do real quick, take this into my shipping bench. I want to get a weight for this whole kit. Pin, piston, ring, and clips. And I'll get a weight on this whole kit. So I'll be right back. I'll have those numbers. All right, I got this cleaned up a little bit. This is the piston I want to use. A little bit shorter skirt, a little bit taller dome. This one's a dome setup versus the flat top. So I'm just going to hang it on here, see what it looks like. Make sure that it's not going to free port real bad or anything. So as it sits, that full kit on that piston was four grams lighter than the stock one. Move these pieces so we don't lose them. Now my plan with the piston. I want the piston as light as I can get it. Still keeping some strength in it. 372 pistons are fairly heavy. But the lighter we can get that, the faster it can spool, the faster it can go up and down. And hopefully we can make more power. But if it's free port and super bad, we might not want that. So let's just see. Alright, so it's hitting. See what it looks like up top here. Now the other big thing, we want to make sure we're not going to smash our spark plug either. So let's thread that in. feel anything hitting there so we should be okay this being a dome piston already we will have to cut this band on a taper to set the squish but it's already hitting I just want to see how much we have till free for plenty well over an eighth inch so it looks like that'll work out Let me throw a wheel on this and get some rough numbers to see just what it looks like. So with that piston, we've got 158 intake duration. Yes, it's still hitting the top, but that is where the base would be sitting. And once we get it all cut and everything, we can double check. This is just baseline numbers to see if I want to use this piston. So we got 158 with that. So half of 158, we got 79 degrees, before top dead center that the intakes open. Go over, let's see where the exhaust opens. Get our top dead center set. Got 79, that's top dead center. Now. Right there. 99 on the exhaust. Let's see those transfers. One twenty four on the transfers. Seventy nine, ninety nine, one twenty four. Just dropping this piston in. It's not a bad start. All right, so here's the cylinder all finished up. Squish band cut. Like I said, we got a dual angle in there. I had a little boo-boo. But the outermost angle matches the piston. 21,000 squish. Raise the uppers. Didn't do a lot with the lowers. This piston swap. The intake landed at 83. Set the uppers at 120 and a half. And... We raised that exhaust up a little bit. Widened it out, raised it up. Now this whole form of cylinder really didn't port too bad. But you can see it's got some grooves in there. A little bit of extra oil holding ability, I guess we can call it. But we'll get this put together. For now, I'm going to run the stock 
ignition timing. Let me show you the muffler. Here's the muffler mod we went with real quick. Just straight through. Don't ask me what percentage it is right now because uh, just put it down the mill, poked a hole through. You can see right there. Still left that one, but we added that one. And we'll put this together, fuel it up. Alrighty, so we'll start putting this together. Got the piston mounted on there. Like I said, we're not going to show close-ups, but if you've been watching the channel, same exact piston I used in the 044 clone last year. But this one, I opened up, lightened up. We're using a steel wrist pin. So overall, total piston assembly from our factory, we are 20 grams lighter. So just shy of a full ounce lighter on the up and down weight. Yes, that could throw off the crank balance, but depending on if they're already overbalanced or underbalanced, it might work out. But for what we're doing here, making a fast firewood saw, we're going to say it works out. I've already showed you the cylinder. We'll get this put on. So for right now, just going to use this boot, carburetor, everything. Did all right for the test runs. Now the factory cylinder bolts seemed a little bit long, so I swapped them out with some shorter ones. I just didn't like the way they felt tightening up all the way. Didn't want them to bottom out or if it wasn't tapped deep enough or something. Now I took all sorts of material. I took all sorts of material off of this piston. So hopefully it holds up and makes it too soft fast. If not, we'll know we took too much off. I think I got just about 12 grams off of the piston alone, which that's pretty good. But we'll get this slid on. Get our bolts put in. This model did come with a metal carb support versus the plastic one. Definitely an aftermarket carb, but like I said, baselines did all right. We'll keep that on for now. Want to see how it does, just ported. Then we'll do timing advance, see where it stops making power there. Might even try more muffler. And then if it's still not where we want it. Probably go into some carb mods. This is currently stock ignition timing or whatever these come with stock. Take top cover off. Put our choke in. We're still running the choke in this. Like I said, it's still on the kit carburetor. Get the recoil on. Get these tightened up all the way. Now we can put some fuel in it and fire it up. Right there. 40 to 1 dominator, a little bit of regular gas. Pull the choke. Let's see how she does.
Well, it fired up. Didn't break the piston yet, so we'll put down the dyno, see what kind of power it puts out. Alrighty, here we have the ported 372 for SawFest. So, hopefully she doesn't scatter. But if she does, it's on film. So we'll get it all warmed up and make some pulls. I don't think she's making much power. Let's try that. Alright, not the numbers we were hoping for, but I'll show you. I'm going to try swapping out this carb with a different one. And then we'll try some ignition stuff, but there's no reason that it shouldn't rev out more than it is. All right, I'm going to pull this top cover off, pull this carb off. All right, the way this cylinder's ported, it should want to get upstairs and run good up there but if we can't come on there we go if we can't get up to the higher rpm it's never gonna run up there so it's not gonna make any power and hopefully that's the issue we're having Because even with the air filter off, it still wasn't making any power on this carburetor. Now, maybe that oopsie dropped too much compression. Maybe the way it's ported just doesn't make any power. Or, maybe this carburetor's not getting the fuel and air right and letting us get the power where we need it. Or letting us get the RPM where the power is. That's what we're going to hope is going on. Got one of these cars from our pal, the Duke. So we'll swap this one on and hope that it fixes our problem. All right. I'm going to leave the air cleaner off for now. That way I can see in here, get the screws. I'll make a couple runs without the air cleaner. If we can get the RPM, if we're making more power. I'll put the air cleaner on just to see how restrictive that filter is. But hopefully it plays nice. Alright, well we lost power again. Let me see... Still not wanting to spool up like I think it should. I just want to see if it will. Maybe we'll try swapping the coil. Let's see what this does. Well, it's still definitely not super happy. It's not wanting to rev up like I think it should. Alrighty, swapped on an OEM coil and put back on the original carburetor. So we'll see if this changes anything. Picked up a little bit of power, but I think it needs a timing advance. 
We pull the flywheel off. All right, advance the timing a bit. It's actually had a rounded off key, so it wasn't very uh, precise, but this should be about six degrees. And we'll see what it does. Definitely lost power with that one. Let's go back the other way. Alright, let's try this timing advance thing again. See how it goes. Helps if we have fuel. Alright, maybe if we have fuel, the timing advance will work a little better. Let's try this. RPM was hiding and needed more timing. So you have one of these clones, might be a good idea. And that's the first time I've ran into that. No popping up top, so I think we can still, uh, no popping up top, so I think we can still advance a little bit more, but I'm super happy with that run. I'll show you a couple of different prints and we'll go from there. All right, here's the results we have so far. Ran out of shop time, but we did make some gains, made some accomplishments. So I wanted to be able to finish this up. Then we'll come back in again, play with timing some more, and we'll play with muffler some more. And I'd really like to see if we can get this above nine horse. But this is what we have. Ended up with triple A, 8.88 horse, 4.51 foot pounds. So you can see, and the thing I'm super happy with, is its peak power up at and above 11,000 RPM. So if we maintain that type of chain speed, we're gonna be doing a lot better than the people that are gonna make power between nine and 10,000. But anyway, this is where we're at. Like I said, we made, this is with no filter, just as it came. Wasn't anywhere near enough timing. That's why it wouldn't spool up. I was fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. So all of these ported runs were all done same day. I had 25, 30 pulls on this saw without taking it off the dyno. I ran a full tank through. That's what happened trying to run this advance. I was running out of fuel and I thought it was too much timing. That wasn't the case. Filled it back up, put it right back on the dyno, trying to get this all done at the end of the day. So... This power might even come up a little bit on a cool race type setting. But so far my pistons held up and we're actually making pretty good power. Well, I just wanted to share this with everybody. So if you get one of these Hulse Forma 372s, you definitely want to look into the timing. They're definitely a little bit low stock. Did all that port work, I was super disappointed. So before we're all said and done, we'll try some different filters, different muffler outlets, and maybe even a little bit more timing advance. It'd be super nice to get this up around 10 horse. I don't know if we can stretch it that far. But once I finally found this power, I was super happy, pretty ecstatic to uh, see that kind of power out of a Chinese saw. And at the high rpm like we want so next time we'll do some more dyno runs and we'll put it in the wood because since i'm actually going to race it I need to put it in the wood but but i just wanted to get this video made say hi to everybody 
still working on saws, still taking customer work. So, hopefully you enjoy it, and thanks a lot, everyone.